am taking a break off YouTube. I was going crrr, I need to be going crrr. I will never say never. I'm about to jackpot. <laughs> I'm about to leave. I'm about to screw out of YouTube. The heart to the words of the Father from above. Open up your heart. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Amaka. A M A K A A A. -A. You already know. You already know what is popping in your area. If you say that with me, comment below. Comment below. I say that with you. I say that with you. Hey, if you're new to my channel, welcome to the Open Up Your Heart channel. Please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all those good stuff. This is a Christian lifestyle and everything in between channel. You know, I talk a lot about Jesus. First of all, I'm going to have to say that name. In the name of Jesus. Higher than other names. I want to say thank you so much for all the love on the last video that I posted. Y'all are real ones. So if you are a returning subscriber, you've been to my channel before, what's up? How you doing? So obviously from the title of the video, you can already see your girl is about to jackpot. <laughs> I'm about to leave. I'm about to screw out of YouTube. But um, even before... <laughs> But before I talk about like just like the background story of why I'm taking a break off YouTube and just everything else, um, I just want to read a scripture. Before I was uh, before I recorded this video, I really felt the Lord impress on my heart to study the book of Ezekiel. And lately, I've actually been studying the book of Ezekiel, and it has really been comforting my heart. It's really been like helping me go through the season of my life. I'm in a season of my life where God is telling me to leave everything that I'm doing that has a lot of like routine and schedule and the normal things that I know especially things that have to do with like just like ministry in this time and just going back to the secret place I think a lot of times we can really get caught up in routines that we can lose the vision that God has called us to first I'm gonna read Ezekiel and then we're gonna hop into the story let's read okay so I have a big Bible here this is my favorite Bible ever. I love this Bible because it's a journaling Bible. Which I highly recommend. It's kind of pricey. I think it's over a hundred dollars, but it's so worth it, guys. I truly believe, yo, the best investment you can ever invest in is in your spiritual life. First of all, not in Bitcoin and money and all those things, or in banks or different things like that. But in your in your the best investment you can ever invest in is in your spiritual life because you would always reap. You would always reap. Bitcoin can crash tomorrow or something can happen to it. It's not going to happen. All my people who are like, oh my gosh, I'm going to say that. Child, I invested in that. But the best investment you can ever invest in is in the is in your spiritual life. Anywho, 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 who, who, before I even talk about like taking a break, I really want to talk uh, touch on the issue of obedience. And the Bible says that if you love God, you would obey His commandments. And today, I don't want to come on here as like the spotlight gang or someone who, oh my gosh, I can't obey God because obedience is it is better than sacrifice number one but obedience in the moment can be really hard i'm not gonna sit here and just say oh my gosh it's just so easy for you to just be obedient just sit there and be like hi god yeah i'm gonna do that no it's not the easiest thing right but um i truly believe that on the other side of obedience is a blessing one of my friends who i just love and i adore so much her name is tarini shout out to you girl i love you so much man i love you i love you but um what's it called i remember her uh, earlier in the year God told me to do something you know and I was just like girl I don't know if I can do this and she said to me Amaka God will bless your obedience and that was all that I needed to hear and I truly believe that not just me in this moment to obey God but I truly believe that there's also somebody on the other side who God is asking to obey say like five days ago I started studying the book of Ezekiel and the book of Ezekiel is so interesting guys like I'm I'm just in chapter 4 I have to stop and be like okay Holy Spirit we're gonna come back because we have to record a video but like yo the book of Ezekiel is <laughs> I'm like <laughs> what how have I not ever like I, I have read the book of Ezekiel before but not in this way and um in Ezekiel chapter 4 Ezekiel is actually a prophet in the Old Testament and um, he's he's just amazing. This man 
is just obeying God. Of course, there were times when he was like, child, I'm not going to do that. He was like, no, God, I'm not doing that. He's like, never. Don't tell me to do that. But I'm going to go to the part where God told Ezekiel to symbolize to the people of Israel what was going to happen to them, right? So God told him to like strip himself and tie himself around and, and lay down on the right and lay down on the left for like a number of days. And, you know, he was just an... Uh, he was just such an obedient prophet, right? And I was just like, chill. Like, this man is like doing all of these things. And then the worst part comes along. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 12 says, So this is what God told Ezekiel to do, right? He says, And you shall eat as a burly cake, baking it in their sight on human dung. So literally, God was telling Ezekiel to use human poop as fuel so that he could bake bread on it something like that like, i'm like child what <laughs> i'm like hey god all the things you've been telling this man to do is enough and then you're telling him to literally cook on human poop like what and you know pretty much in those days the prophet didn't they didn't merely just speak a word they had to act out the word as god gave it to them and it was so it's so encouraging to me that like god gave ezekiel so many crazy things to do but as he was doing it, he was enabling Ezekiel to do these things. What God was asking Ezekiel to do was to get out of his comfort zone. And with obedience, God actually calls us out of our comfort zone. And there's something I always say, we should live a life comfortable being uncomfortable for Jesus. Be comfortable being uncomfortable for Jesus. And it's easier said than done, right? And in this moment, as I was reading, I was like, First of all, why does Ezekiel, why does Ezekiel have to live out these things? Like, can he just say, this is what's going to happen to Israel? As they speak it, they have to act it out as well. And that's the same thing. It really brought me back to just like Christianity in modern days. Because So there's hermeneutics where it's like, okay, what's happening in this passage? And how did they take it in that time? And there's exegesis of like, how can we... How can we um, implement this into our life? How can we bring it back to the 21st century? How can we bring it back to our own day and time? Who's texting me? Ciao. Sean, this is you. <laughs> Sean, is, Sean can never text once. Anyways, as I was saying, he us to do stuff. When God tells us to do things, he also wants us to act it out. God doesn't just want you to be a hearer. He also wants you to be a doer of his word. And I'm sharing this to pinpoint what God has told me to do. I am taking a break off YouTube for the month of May. So for the month of May, I will not be posting any videos on YouTube because I'm taking a break. Because, you know, the spirit of the living God has, has drawn his daughter in. And he's like, girl, I need you in my circle. <laughs> so... March 23rd, I was recording a podcast with my friend Abby. Shout out to you. If you guys don't know, I'm a host for my church podcast. It's called Knowing the Why. Just type in Knowing the Why, Destiny and Dominion, and it will pop up, and you guys will be blessed by all the episodes. So 23rd of March, I heard I I I felt um I felt it in my spirit that God wanted me to take a break from every single thing. That day, the producer, Nathan, shout out to you, Nathan. He had called for like a mini meeting with Abby and I. And he said that, oh, like you guys are taking a break after season 10 because we've done 10 episodes for the podcast already. God is so good, right? And I was just like, what do you mean we're taking a break? Like, we should keep going. We should keep going. And he's like, no, we're taking a break to analyze, come back and everything. And I was just like, I was, I was not myself because for me, I don't rest like rest is not part of my dictionary like i can be doing like 20 other things and it's good to be productive but really bad when you get your identity from what you do instead of who god calls you to be right and i i'm gonna confess to say that a lot of times when i do things i do things just to do them i'm not saying that the holy spirit is not backing me up but a lot of times i really really put my identity in the things I do instead of the one who has called me to do the things that I do. And I remember talking to someone and she was just asking me a lot about like my YouTube, where do I see it? And I couldn't answer a lot of the questions that she was asking and everything just kept showing me, Amaka, you need to go back to God. Like you need to go back to your foundations and you need to start building up because as people are coming on the journey, it's, it's, you know, it's getting cloudy and you're like, okay, what is God telling me to do? And the Bible says that the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and the seasons where by they were living in and they were able to obey God. They were able to, and they were, sorry, and they were able to lead Israel. And I always want to understand the heartbeat of God. I was just like, okay, it's a time 
to reset. Reset and understand the call. Reset and understand. Reset, 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 reset. And with um, my group Truth Circle, we're also resetting. We're closing for the month of May. And as I was reading and as I was just praying, God said to me, Amaka, in the month of May, I want it to be that may you find God. May Truth Circle find God. May you find God as well. And it, that's just the theme for the month of May for me, of may I find God. May I find the heartbeat of God. Because I want my spirit to be very sensitive to God. Like I want it to be like, like when God's going, I need to be going. Like that's how I want to train my spirit to be. Because if I want to be a minister of the gospel and everything in this end times, Chow, you need to be sensitive to God so well that your heart be like, okay, God's moving this way. You go move that way too. So obedience is better than sacrifice. The thing about obedience is nobody has to understand why you're doing it. Obedience doesn't have to go with your feelings. Obedience doesn't have to go with... I hope this video is making sense. One of the easiest ways to obey God is to tell other people as well. Tell people in your inner circle. Tell people you trust, right? I remember when God said... I'm like, I remember when God said to me, I'm like, I want you to, and, and I don't hear God as in like a loud, thunderous voice. It's an impression in my heart. It's like a, it's, it's a drawing. It's just, I don't know. It's just in my heart that I just know. And I just know it's like an inner conviction. And you just like, you just know that it's God. Right. And the more you obey God and the more, the more you'll be able to tell the voice of God, if that makes sense. But it's back to my point of, I think one thing that also makes obedience easier is have accountability partners around you, right? People who will remind you of what God has called you to do. So for me, when I was getting out of YouTube, when I was, when I had heard in my heart that God is calling me out of YouTube and Truth Circle and out of all these things, I the first one of the first things I did was tell some of my very close friends. So I told one of my friends, Sean, about it, and I told Afram as well. I remember telling Sean and the both of them literally kept on saying, okay, I hope you're getting ready to wrap up from YouTube. I hope you're, and that really made it easier for me because I was like, okay, I remember this. I know these people are keeping me accountable. So obviously I want to do it. And also if God said it, believe it and that settles it. It doesn't have to, nobody has to understand your obedience. When I read Ezekiel and him baking bread on <laughs> poop, that really did warm my heart, even though it's disgusting, but it warmed my heart because he obeyed God regardless of how. It wasn't about his feelings, right? Because at first he was like, oh my gosh, I don't do that. He was like, never. He used the word never twice. Like, I think I underlined it. I was like, this man's out here saying never to God like three times. He was like, I will never say never. And like, he was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to say never. <laughs> you know, and the thing about obedience is it doesn't mean that you're at the first, at first, you're not going to be like, whoa. But as you go on and as you have an intimate relationship with God, it gets easier, right? Because as Ezekiel was talking, he was like, God, I'm not doing that. He was able to say that because he had an intimate relationship with God, right? And with an intimate relationship with God, it makes obedience easier, right? So having accountability partners, understanding that what God has said is not about feelings, right? Because when Ezekiel was doing all these things, it wasn't a feeling-based thing. It was a thing of like, I love God so much and I want to do it. And he understood that his obedience wasn't just for him it was actually for the people watching him all these things that ezekiel was doing where god was like tie yourself up or eat bread and poop and all of these things it wasn't actually just for ezekiel it was actually because of the people watching him and a lot of times the obedience is not actually about you a lot of the times it's not about you a lot of times it's because of the people watching you a lot of times it's because of someone else later on in life will need this thing and they will remember that god told amaka to shut down everything and she did and they will remember that god told ezekiel to go and eat bread on poop and bake it on poop and he did it and all of these things is also to build faith in your community and in the christian world and among people who are watching you as well so those are a few things about obedience i didn't want to make this video about just like oh, Baka, you're leaving youtube but this is also a video just like obeying the voice of god and understanding and how to obey and all those things because I remember my friend earlier today, I was talking to Amaka D. Amaka D. D. you. And I was talking to her today, and she was like, Yo, Amaka, I envy the way you obey God. Ciao, it's not easy. <laughs> I look like a fool a lot of times. <laughs> but, man, I, I 
fear God so much not to obey him. That's the thing, right? And I know that at the end of the obedience, it's not just about me, but it's also about the people who are watching. So all these things in perspective, it really does make obedience easier. So yeah, guys, that is it for today's video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> me realizing that this is my last video until June, guys. So hopefully I come back in June. And maybe today you're asking yourself, I'm like, how am I going to know when you're back to YouTube? You're going to know by you subscribing to YouTube and clicking the bell button. So there's a bell button right next to the subscribe button. So when I come back in June, you will know when I post a video because YouTube will send you a notification because you've clicked on that bell button. So I really, really do urge you to please click on the bell button. Hopefully people don't all subscribe and leave my YouTube. If they do, well... I've served my generation well for this season of my life. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be in June. Please pray for me. I'm praying for you as well. I'll see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell people to subscribe. Imagine if I came back and it's more people who are subscribed than more people who've left. That would just be such a blessing. But regardless, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video in June. Bye for now. <laughs> Yo. Open up your heart, open up your heart